We are going to work, we are going to fight, and we are going to win, win, win. The U.S. midterm elections will be the biggest test of Donald Trump's presidency since his election two years ago. I'm not on the ballot, but in a certain way, I'm on the ballot, so please go out and vote. And for Trump, there's lots on the line if Democrats pick up enough seats. Expect more investigations into allegations of corruption, Russia, and Trump's businesses. So Trump has ramped up his public appearances, holding massive campaign rallies and stoking familiar grievances among voters. The Democrat Party is openly encouraging millions of illegal aliens to break our laws, violate our borders, and overwhelm our country. Except what Trump told this crowd is a lie, according to the Toronto Star's Daniel Dale. It's truly incredible to me still how often he deviates from a perfectly normal speech to say something inaccurate. For two years now, Dale has fact-checked every statement Trump has made, often pointing out what's wrong with them in real time on social media. It's gotten him blocked by no less than Trump himself and won him a claim from U.S. journalists still not sure how far to go in calling out their own president. We at the NewsHour uh, talk about inaccurate statements, false statements. You're comfortable using the word lie. So how has a Canadian journalist become the one to challenge an American president on his own fake news? Daniel Dale joins us from Washington. So Daniel, lots of ground to cover with you, but let's begin with the fact checking. How do you do it so quickly? Because we all watch you do it in real time on Twitter during these rallies. Well, the, the secret uh, makes me seem less impressive, I think, and that is that he repeats the same false claims over and over. And so the first time, I might not be able to do it in real time. Um, but, you know, if he does it the first time in March 2017, by the time it's, uh, you know, September, October, or November 2018, uh, I can do it pretty quickly. Washington is, is unique in a way in that it is full of journalists all trying to cover the very same thing. So there you are as a Canadian journalist for a Canadian publication. How did you find your own lane? Well, no one w was doing it. Um, and a lot of reporters in the U.S. have much more access than I do um, as a Canadian. You know, power brokers don't really return my calls. I'm not breaking big stories. And so I thought, you know, how can I contribute as an outsider without that access? And one of the things that struck me about Trump's campaigning was just how incessantly, unusually dishonest it was. And I thought, you know, this is a huge story that isn't getting sufficient attention. And so I started fact-checking him, and the response was, you know, almost immediately just overwhelming. Um, people were really appreciative of the fact that someone was, was doing this. Um, and I, I just sort of kept going out of necessity. And you and the Toronto Star have made the decision to call Trump on his lies using that, you know, sort of incendiary word in some people's views. And it's interesting in the contrast because we hear so much about Trump's feud with the American news media and theirs with him, and yet many of them are still reluctant to go that far in using the word lie. How come, in your view? I think um, it's seen by many American publications and reporters as a departure from journalistic standards. You know, the standard is you quote what the president says, you quote what his critics say, and you sort of let the readers decide. You certainly go, don't go so far as to say he's a liar. But my argument is that this is objective fact. Um, our job is to tell people accurately what's going on, and in my view, you know, what is going on in many of these cases is that the president is lying. I, I don't use the word lie in every case. I think some of his false claims are inadvertent. Sometimes, as we know, he's confused about policy matters that he may not be very familiar with. But in other cases, I think it's clear that he simply made something up. He's fabricated something. To read the comments section following your tweets is to get a very interesting window on what's happening in the U.S. And if, if you look at social commentary, on social media, if you look at cable news, the impression, certainly from this side of the border, is that things are really polarized and that people are incredibly angry. Is that the impression you get in Washington? Yes, ab absolutely. Um, I think, you know, my followers skew liberal and democratic, but 
but you know they are angry too. They're angry at the president. Um, and if you go out into uh, places where the president is more popular, people are still angry at the other side, even though they have the president and they have Congress. You know, they're angry at the Democrats' treatment of Judge Brett Kavanaugh during the confirmation process. They're angry at the media for what they think is mistreatment or overly negative treatment of the president. They're angry at uh, liberal or left-wing protesters, um, you know, who protest conservative speeches on college campuses, and so. There is anger on all sides. It's an incredibly bitter, divided, polarized time for sure. Fascinating to talk to you and to read your work. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.